I don't know, I lost it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Spirit Visions Actor Session. We're here joined with Miguel Fairbrother. Miguel, you know, introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, uh, bonjour, Wabshki uh, Miguel Nijnikaz, Winnipeg and Donji. My name is Miguel Fairbrother. My uh, Anishinaabe name is White Feather, and uh, I'm currently residing in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> Winnipeg, what brought you to Winnipeg? Uh, you know what? It's a uh, family. Family, you know, family uh, is a big thing. Um, I've been away from my family and family area of Treaty 3 for, you know, I had to leave to go and, and chase my dreams. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm at a point now where I can be where I want to be, which is near family. And that happens to be Winnipeg and where we shoot a little show called Burden of Truth, uh, which we're going into season four of. And, and so um, it just made sense. Like, uh, after last season, I uh, I fell in love with the people, the land, you know, um, even the weather. I fell oh, in yeah. love with, <laughs> and uh, uh, I just I love it here. There's there's more space. I don't know. People look at you in the eye and they mm -hmm. say hello. Sometimes you know they you're acknowledged. Um, yeah, I, I find Winnipeg to be really actually a, a positive place um, uh, for for artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm from Alberta and I moved here and I found the, the same thing about uh, Winnipeg and it's very welcoming and, and you can be an artist here and grow your career and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And less, and less competition too, in a way, um, because it feels like there's a lot of funding opportunity here in, in Manitoba mm -hmm. um, through different funding bodies and, and you just have to have the vision and, and the drive to go after them. Right. A couple Google searches and yeah. and uh, and start telling your stories, right? So, um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Absolutely awesome. So, let's start from the beginning. Like, how did you get sure. into this crazy world of film? Yeah. Um, well, I, I like I I didn't grow up in the city. I was born in Toronto uh, at St. Mike's Hospital, but my mom, being a teacher, um, decided to break away from uh, the city. Um, and at this point, my, my father had passed away um, uh, when I was young. And, uh, and he, he's uh, Ojibwe from Trudy Three, um, buried in Grassy Narrows. And he, uh, but my mom, you know, being uh, non-native, but had been living with, uh, within the community and, and kind of felt like really connected to the people and, and, and the, the culture, um, she decided to take jobs her teaching jobs on reserves. Um, so the, we moved from Toronto all the way up to Webequay and Big Trout Lake, like flying reserves and then Thunder Bay and, and Webequay and Big Trout and, and uh, sorry, Big Mobert and uh, uh, Kenora. Um, so it was like, you know, growing up in the North, uh, you know, we didn't have all the cable and, and screens and everything we have now. We had, we had VHS and DVDs and movies and we just watched a ton of movies. And then we would go and act those movies out in the woods. Like I would just like, we'd watch Terminator or something or Star Wars. And then we'd jump in my canoe and we'd head up the river and yeah. go build our little guns, you know, like out of little sticks and, 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 and tape and stuff. And we'd come up with all these storylines and we'd act it out for like, you know, hours and hours until we were tired and went home. Um, so I, I always say that like, that was like my initial, like get into it or my, my initial like, you know, training into it was training in the woods, just play acting in the woods, um, making lean twos and fake guns out of sticks. <laughs> um, but then, uh, then I finally got to uni um, high school uh, in Kenora, um, Ontario, and I uh, came to that point where we had to decide what you wanted to do with the rest of your life, and which is such a tough and ridiculous question to be asking a grade ten year old. You know, grade ten, what you want to do with the rest of your life? There's just so much that can happen and is possible. Um, so I was looking at science, I was looking at massage therapy, chiropractor, DNA, I really liked DNA because of 6162, yeah. uh, legislation in Indian Act legislation, I was really interested in like what makes blood, like why is blood quantum such a thing? Um, but you know, I didn't want to be like in an office, like studying things all the time, like in a cubicle, I wanted to be doing different things and changing and I at grade 10, grade 11, I really fell in love with the drama class. I never did any like plays or like musicals or anything. I was too shy. Like yeah. I was way too shy. Like I was, I was so shy that I used to eat my lunch in the woods behind the school. So nobody could see me 
eating food. Um, I was just so shy. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. I was just shy. And so over years of taking this drama course and and uh, kind of coming out of my shell and playing like, you know, improv games and and like whose line is it anyway and those yeah. kind of things, it kind of really brought me out and and uh, made me realize that I really like this performing thing. And so our teacher started encouraging us to write, to develop these, uh, you know, uh, monologues and, and character skits and stuff. And I really got... Um, kind of taken with it and and it was that year that I got hired at uh, uh, the youth drop-in center in Kenora and I was working as a youth worker when a fellow who uh, I didn't know was my my uncle <laughs> uh, is uh, my brother my my stepfather's uh, brother uh, Negon um, uh, uh, Kavanaugh he um, he had been training in the arts in Treaty 3 and had been going around. He actually trained, trained with Wawate Fobister, you know, before he became Wawate Fobister. Um, and uh, uh, so I was working with him and we, we, we uh, really started using Augusto Buell uh, Theater for the Oppressed uh, training, which is like um, role play and, and uh, working on social issues like bullying and racism, but using native and, and non-native kids to uh, switch roles and see what it feels like to kind of be in each other's shoes. And then we can have, you know, discussions about that. So I really started to see like seeing art changing people, like changing people for the better too. So that really excited me. Um, and, uh, and that year, Don suggested that I go to Dabajamajik uh, Theater uh, uh, Company. So, um, and they were recruiting, looking for you, new youth. And I, and, uh, I met with the, the recruiter and, and I fell in love with her. She fell in love with me. And, and, and I went to do my first year at Dabaj and, and learned a ton about community animation and theater and what it means to make theater for our communities, about us, for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting to play in theaters at the, uh, the ruins in Manitoulin Island. Um, and I did that for like three, four summers until finally uh, somebody at um, Martha Burns, actually from Soul Pepper, uh, was at Manitoulin Island and she said, Miigwe, you should be doing this. Uh, you should do this. And she said, you, you got to put an application together uh, for, for school. You got to do this. So I, um, terrified, you know, I, I did. Um, and uh, I put it into George Brown and York University and a couple other places uh, and was so intimidated. I flew down to York and uh, I had to do this like little writing exercise and I was so nervous. And then we had to do all the monologues that I totally screwed up on my first monologue. Um, but who walked into my audition room? It was Michael Gray Eyes. You know, and I've been, I grew up like watching Michael Gray Eyes as a young man, young actor going like, oh man, someday I wanna, I wanna do that, you know? And, and I always remember his character from Dance Me Outside, Gooch, right? And they always talk about him. Oh yeah, that guy, he ripped off somebody's arms. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I always think about that scene and, and Pademski and all those guys, like those guys were kind of, uh, to me, royalty to, you know, and, and somebody that we wanted to really look up to, to, to be like someday. So um, I was so, I was starstruck that he walked into my panel <laughs> to listen to my um, monologues. But my second monologue happened to be about uh, Indian agents Mm -hmm. um, and the letter that he, the Indian agents would send out to other Indian agents across Canada. So I performed that letter and it was very, something very special to me. Um, and I think that's what got me into uh, York University. And I, I did that for four years um, and graduated and been doing it ever since. Um, it's been a long road. <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. I mean, uh, you mentioned that, right? Like, um, growing up watching these people your these people right like um and uh you know just like your idols right like it's super cool that's super cool your idol work jumped into your your audition like that's i know i'd, 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 I'd be flustered i'd be like i don't yeah, but that's amazing i was i was flustered i was just like uh, uh and maybe that's why i screwed up the first monologue too because i was just so like starstruck like native starstruck <laughs> 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 uh, after after university, what was because I remember my me for about a year after university, I struggled to try try to figure out how to find work and how do we balance how do we get into this this industry because it's so there's not really a nice clean clear cut where you apply for a job and you get it like it's just mm -hmm. you how did how did you find that how did you make that transition? Um, well, I I had the. The, the opportunity to work at, at the Bodge, right? So I was, 
while I was still in university, I was going back to Dubaj in the summers mm -hmm. and performing on their main stage. Oh. Uh, so I was getting experience. I don't think I was supposed to, but, <laughs> but I was getting experience because sometimes they say don't work in the summer because mm -hmm. you're just going to reinforce your bad habits as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to practice. So I just practiced. And um, each summer I would try to book one thing or do one thing, even if it was free or I wasn't making money at it, at least I was doing something um in that performance to make myself uh, better but as soon as uh, i graduated school like i was talking about the time traveler which was this you know this uh, pilot episode series is kind of a low budget sci-fi uh pilot about um this girl who comes through a time travel dimension or whatever and, yeah. and has to do something in the past and uh i think we were like the way they talked to us about it they're like oh we're gonna make like six episodes and and we're gonna do like two seasons and all this stuff and then i find out later that all they had uh, um, in place was the pilot. It was a pilot competition. And the competition we were going up against was Blackstone. And like, so oh, oh. there was no ch freaking chance that we were even like gonna place even remotely close to anywhere near what the production value of Blackstone was. Yeah. So I realized while watching those two episodes that night when they aired, I was just like, I thought I was, I thought my career was going to be like set and I was going to be fine for the next few years. And, and after that, I, I didn't really work for like almost a year or two years uh, or months and months and months. Um, so you have to do other jobs. And, uh, but I swore to myself that I was not going to do door knocking. Uh, I mean, sorry, I wasn't going to do, I wasn't going to do, do, do you want fries with that? There was no way that I was going to do that. So um, I decided to become a door knocker, which is like, door-to-door -door sales and I sold furnaces and air conditioning units uh, to people that didn't need it <laughs> but, yeah, but I needed need money <laughs> so um, and the guy the sales guys were really good and they trained me up really good and but they were fierce and I just didn't care that much about furnaces and air conditioning I just needed I acted my way into that job and then I acted my way out of it saying that I needed to yeah I needed to do something else um, so, you know, there's jobs that you have to take just to pay the bills because the job isn't there right away or it, it's not going to go as you plan or whatever. And um, so it takes a little while at first, I think, uh, where you book one job and it's about doing your best job, best, the best that ability that you can bring to the job. You, you do that because um, it's, it's how you work in that first job or second job that's going to get you the next job. Yeah. And it's how you work in that job that's going to get you the next job, right? So, you know, being a, a hard person to work with on your first job, it's probably, you're probably not going to get hired again for a little while or whatever, you know, like people, this is a people industry, right? So um, it's relationships. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, egos can get into it, but like it's, it's we got to, you've got to have open communication and, uh, and you got to work with a lot of different people. So um yeah, at first thinking that my career was like gonna, I was gonna skyrocket yeah. uh, to the big ether, but no, that didn't happen. And I had to do a lot of work to get to that point. Um, and then the work kept drying up too over years, and uh, I would be depressed, <laughs> wanting to quit. Uh, there, there was a year where I quit almost every year. I was like, I'm never doing this again um, because you just get told no all the time, mm -hmm. going to auditions and trying things and you just get told no no you're not the right person until you are the right person yeah you know and then you won't be the right person again until you are again and then but that's the thing like you start off you get one job and you don't get a job for a while and then you get two jobs and then you don't get a job for a while and then you have three jobs you know it like it keeps building i think like that if you stay on 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 route on path you know on track because sometimes it can be a really long road like there's some actors that don't get recognized till they're like 40 or 50 or whatever but it depends on what you want to do, what type of stories you want to tell too, right? So um, for me, I really wanted to tell movies. I wanted to tell, I wanted to, that was what got me into this industry, you know, like making movies and uh, telling those kind of stories. Um, so that's what I really wanted to do. And, and um, then at this point when I had no work and I had no way of doing anything, nobody was hiring me. Um, Iris Turcott, a dramaturg from Factory Theater, sat me down and said, Miguel, you need to start making work. Uh, and it was at that point that it really changed my life. Um, she helped me write my first grant to the Ontario Arts Council. And I think I got awarded like $12,000 or something. Um, 
and uh, uh, that paid my that paid my almost my whole year as a young man um, to develop my own work and work on my own piece and then perform my own piece. And I that was when I think I really caught like the bug of why I'm doing this. You know, it's it's to tell stories and to tell stories from my my community and tell stories from my family and and my life. Uh, um, uh, and so I've been I've been writing a lot of grants ever since, and I've be, you know made myself a good grant writer and. Uh, application writer because well um, for those 100 percent of the work you don't share <laughs> nobody's gonna see it right so um, you have to be willing to share you have to be willing to make your own work I think uh, I think that's what really um, will help with a long career mm -hmm. your ability to make your own work yeah absolutely I think I think mm -hmm. it's a you touched on a great point I kind of mm -hmm. say to every established or emerging actor is you know mm -hmm. um if you if I if I just waited for every time I booked you know I I would have booked three things since film school which I graduated in 2015 right yeah yeah but you know we've I've made work for myself and and you know I've been able to you know work steadily since um and, and I always find, do you find this, like whenever I write something or I, I create work, it's a little bit, there's a little more freedom where you're like, okay, let me just try something like this, right? Like, yep. um, like as, in a, as a comedian, um, I've always wanted to do a comedy, right? And so, you know, not too many indigenous co comedies are coming out right now. Mm. We created one and, you know, it's been, it's been super fun, like trying to go through that process and, and, uh, yeah, so how do you feel? Do you feel like your own work gives, lets you allow, gives you more freedom? 100%. Uh, like, I don't think I've ever been more fulfilled than performing my own work. Um, like, this past year, uh, like the show that I was telling you about that Iris Turcotte um, uh, guided me in writing my first grant, um, it was a show called Is It and Dumb? And that was about 11 years ago that I did my first iteration of it which was more of like a dance singing kind of avant-garde kind of different you know not not a linear piece you know kind of abstract mm -hmm. uh, and then uh several years after that i got another grant and then i brought in a director to work with me to develop the narrative of it okay. and we developed it to a 75 minute piece and then we wrote another grant several years later to actually perform it right and and put it on because now we had worked on it and developed the script and did those kind of steps to get it to performance level. Uh, and then, and then we uh, wrote that final grant to actually produce the play. Um, and then it was a success. And then we, and then we did the world premiere at uh, native earth in Toronto last year. Uh, and so there's, you know, it took me about 10 years to write it, but um, there's this real momentum that's happening with it now because like we did the play I've performed it in Toronto in Vancouver and and these and we're gonna perform it here in Winnipeg as well um, uh, I've got the set in, in my house so you know it's travelable um, uh, we're gonna look to try and do it at the MTC or young theaters at YPT or somewhere we'll do it we'll do it for a weekend or something soon over the next few months um, show called is it uh, an understanding so it follows a young man's life um, uh, learning about who he is as an Ojibwe person and then also learning that uh, there's a secret that was held from him about his father and uh, about his father's death. So he kind of goes on in like a detective story to uncover the truth uh, in that process transforming himself into uh, the leader that the people need. Uh, so uh, and that story um, you know is based on my father, it's based on me, it's based on my brother. Um, but now, uh, when the when the um, CBC COVID relief fund uh, came out, I decided to put together a pitch with my team, and uh, and we got awarded we got awarded the the, the pilot um, pitch. So now, like this work of ten years, uh, when you sometimes feel like, why am I working on this for so long, or why is this what I should be putting my time into? Um, but I just kind of felt like I was guided the entire process. Like it's important. It means something. It means so much to me to be able to tell this story and bring it to our community and bring it to the world. Um, so yeah, it's so much more meaningful because that now, like it started as a, as a song, it started as a song then became a narrative, then became a play. And now it's going to become a TV series and who knows, maybe in 10 years from now, it'll be a movie. Right. So 
it's really, it's been a really neat journey um, making my own work. That's amazing. That's an amazing story to tell. And congratulations on um, getting uh, the more funding on, on the COVID relief fund. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now I just have to make a good pilot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, believe no. in you. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to, we're going to, sh- we'll figure it out. We'll figure out, we'll get everybody writing on it. So stay tuned, all you young actors out there. Stay tuned for our show. You're going to have to audition for us someday. There'll be lots of native people with roles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got to, we got to take back this screen, man. Exactly. Like storytelling it's this is our art form. Okay. Absolutely. You know, this is, this is our, this is in, true indigenous art form uh, storytelling you know so mm-hmm. yeah i think i think uh i think uh you know we're seeing a lot of talents now you know um starting to come out of the woodwork and it's really exciting time i feel a bit like it's an indigenous renaissance maybe i'm a bit ahead of my time saying that but um i do actually feel that way i feel that this is a really great time for indigenous artists um, and I always think about the Louis Riel quote, right? Like, uh, my people will sleep for 100 years and when they awake, it'll be the artists that give them their spirit back. So, uh, I'm very much follow that, uh, way of thinking. Absolutely. And it's you, even since I've started, I started about eight years ago, uh, and to, to where I am now in my career, you know, and I've, I've seen just, it's just this, like, like you said, a renaissance of indigenous people, you know, like we have, and they're from everywhere, from comedians to, you know, actors to you know like when I was growing up we didn't like when I, ho- I for hosting that's awesome like we didn't have a host like me yeah on on tv like we never you know and and it was it was just weird to be like how, you know I'm you know how long like you know I grew up with Bill Nye and all these like you know, non-indigenous you know comedian funny people and I was like mm-hmm. I lose clues right and just like mm-hmm. we're you know, growing up, I, we never had us, right? And, yeah. And, you know, our next generation is going to step on our shoulders and take it even farther, which is an amazing, an amazing thing, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's it. We're, we just keep building on each other's successes and, and, uh, and we keep going up together, you know, because I think um, at least maybe, maybe this hasn't been historically the way it's been, but I do feel uh, a type of support within the Native community more so than I do... I would say in the mainstream community. Um, maybe it's just because there's fewer of us and we're all working towards a similar goal, you know? Um, and maybe, maybe it's just that the types of things that indigenous people are interested in, you know, um, like I was reading, I was reading, I can't remember who wrote it, but I was reading an article about um, what, like what native people are interested, what native artists are interested in, you know, and there's like so a couple of general themes. And one is, is uh, how to be a better human being, mm-hmm. how to be a better relative, you know, cousin, whatever, and how to be a better ancestor. Mm-hmm. Like it's the, generally those three things is what we're all kind of talking about or working through and, and, and interested in, you know, like, we're interested in being better humans um, and, and better community members and better society members um, because I think that is a truly indigenous concept, like community, right? Like we value the community rather than the individual. So, um, and I think the mainstream culture is all about the individual. So there's gonna be some tension, I think, in, in when, as we try to tell our stories, but you know, we gotta have vision, we gotta have courage and we gotta keep stepping forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, let's just jump into kind of auditions a little bit. Um, <laughs> this one, like little uh, people who are like, "Oh, he's got a new show. Maybe I." Had a new <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh what's man, your, what's your biggest advice for you know getting getting that first off or getting that audition and, and you know? Yeah, well, I mean, the main thing, uh, the main way that everybody starts is you got to get a headshot right and make a basic resume uh, google resume acting resumes and you'll see and it doesn't matter if you have one or two things uh even if you did a play or whatever just put it on there right um put your special skills on there um because it's more about your acting ability and your headshot anyway that's going to get you the job like yeah they'll see your resume be like oh okay he's got a lot of experience great but it's really about whether you're right for the character or not you know it, that's all it's about um 
And I think I did a lot of head games. I think that's one of the biggest things that actors do to themselves is they play head games. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like a character comes along on your desk and you're like, Oh wow, this is me. This is so me. Mm -hmm. This is this whole universe has been conspiring for me to arrive at this moment, to act this scene, this character. And then you do the audition and you're so nervous because you've put it on such a pedestal and you completely uh, shit the bed <laughs> because, because you're nervous and, and you've, you've built it up too much and you can't actually just do the work because you, you, you know, you're thinking about, you've put all these stakes on your ability to win the role rather than just acting or being a human being. Yeah. So um, I think that was the biggest lesson. It took me about five to 10 years to learn <laughs> is, uh, is, is, and I'm still learning is to be yourself as cliche as that sounds. Um, they want to see you um, because nobody's ever seen you the way we are seeing you now. And, um, and we want what you got rather than what you think we want, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, and all, and be prepared. You know, like there's, there's, uh, there's pre preparation will help with the nerves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was a time where I wouldn't do as much practice on my lines and uh, I wouldn't practice like where, where I was like literally looking, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and some basic things like, so if the camera's right here and, and so then my character I'm going to be acting to is just off screen a little bit, right? So here's my eye line. But if I look over here, it looks like I'm completely looking to Atlanta or something, right? <laughs> the basic thing of like looking here and then changing your eye look to here and then back to here. Like it's so small, but on camera, it looks, it's huge. It's huge. So like something simple like that, like eye line and practicing your eye line and practicing your lines, just so you know what the dialogue is. Um, and you can get it, get your lines to a point so that you're not thinking about the line before you say it. You're actually just listening right? You're no longer just acting. Um, you're listening to your scene partner, you know, you're putting everything on your scene partner. Um, so you're listening, listening with your whole body, everything, and your scene partner says something and you respond and you think about it. And then you respond with the line that you've been learning as if you are saying it for the first time, of course. But uh, that's the trick, right? Is, is to make it feel natural or to, to rehearse your lines in such a way that you aren't thinking about them, that they're just kind of a natural response to what the reader would say you know, as they say their lines. And, and then at that point, all you have to do is listen. If you're listening, you're going to respond like a human. So, uh, but that took me a long time to learn because it's nerve wracking, right? To walk into uh, a room with a camera and a guy standing behind the camera and a director and somebody standing in front of a screen kind of going, okay, thank you. Uh, stand on the square, stand on the X, please. Thank you. And say your name. Okay, great. Uh, anytime. <laughs> that's it's so that's so like unnatural right like it's so weird and uh and but you know you've got 30 seconds or a minute to show what you've got and that's it so hopefully you've done your homework and you've practiced your eye lines and you've uh you know you're bringing you're bringing who you are in to this role absolutely absolutely i think yeah. I, some auditions are some of the most awkward things in the world sometimes or it's just like oh man you know, i've yeah. There's some auditions that I've walked out of and just being like, what the hell did I just do? You know, like, it's like, I, I planned all this stuff. And then when I got in there, I just kind of like got deer in a headlights. And I, and I just like, I did, I was screwing up the lines or I was saying them too fast. And I just was yeah. nervous and <laughs> breathing really fast. And, oh, oh, it's awful. I, I did this video game once, this video game audition once, and I had a prop in my hand and I got so like into it because I was supposed to be playing like a caveman or something like I and we had this language, so I was like, you know what, I was making all this stuff up and getting really intense, and, and I started going like this, and I guess the, I had gone like this so fast that I, I hit the prop on my chin, Oh no! I started, and I busted my chin open here, and I just started bleeding all down, and I didn't know this, but then everybody was looking at me like, oh, fuck. like, this is crazy, yeah. um, and, uh, and I'm just like right in, like getting into the guy's face and everything, and, I didn't book it <laughs> and I probably terrified a bunch of people. Uh, but that was one of the more weird auditions that I've ever had. But funny enough is that then they called me back for uh, the same game, but a voice character instead of the, the guy running around smashing himself in the face <laughs> with props. Um, but I actually ended up doing a uh, voice for that game. And that was a uh, uh, Far Cry Primal. 
Oh. And, uh, and I had to learn like a whole Neanderthal language that was developed by some university down south. And, you know, I had to do these scenes where I'm like getting attacked by an eagle while being set on fire. Like, yeah. okay, like how do you, yeah, that's such a weird direction. Oh, you want me to do it? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different versions of that. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's basically you're just basically being kid and being being a kid, being allowed to play and just use your imagination, right? Yeah, that's hilarious. I remember I had this one audition for the Hudson's Bay company, and they wanted to show like these these um yeah. I, I, I was thinking about it, I was like, oh yeah, maybe I wouldn't. I didn't get it. Right? <laughs> like, uh, and it was back when I was like, you know, I was an eager actor and I was willing to like put a little bit of. I don't know, just, you're just so young, right? And as you get yeah. older, you're like, eh, I probably, you know, probably wouldn't do that now. now <laughs> but um, it was funny because it was like, okay, you're, you're, you're this tough, you know, tra like traveler and you're in the mountains and you have to set up like fire. And I was like, uh, do I mime it? Do I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I remember bringing um, a fire, like a little fire kit, that like homemade fire kit that I used to have. <laughs> <laughs> It's so, already funny. It oh is so <laughs> like so like i'm in this like wardrobe that's totally ridiculous and i'm like setting up this little fire and then doing it and and then i like remember i was about to like start it and i was like trying to i was like do you guys want me to do it like you know like yeah. so it was it's some of the most weirdest uh, like and then the camera guy's not even looking at the the camera anymore and he's like, oh shit i gotta like you know and just, yeah. you're, you're like just, off of screen you're like down here somewhere <laughs> yeah, and, oh, I, totally it. I was just watching it. It was just, yeah like, because yeah. I was like looking at what the hell you were doing. <laughs> this is so awkward. Yeah, uh, didn't book it. Kind of, and then I, I remember running at the gym and seeing the commercial, and I was like, oh, uh, they wanted their stereotype, like you know, the stereotypes, right? Yeah, and, for sure, okay. for sure. And that 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 brings gives me another uh, reminds me of of something is that you know there's been times where I didn't book the job. And I was so bummed about it, thinking, man, I'm not a good actor. And mm -hmm. man, I, I just thought this was the one and, and all that. But um, generally, you know, six months later, when those things come out, I generally go, mm, I think I dodged a bullet. <laughs> you know, like, like, it's just like that part wasn't right for me. You know, that part was right for that person who got it. So as soon as you don't, because you're not getting roles, doesn't mean you're a bad actor. It just means it's just not the right role for you, you know, and, and the right role is out there for you. It really is like, absolutely. It is out there. And if it's not out there, create it. Right. Um, because nobody will ever be able to write a character for you like you or like a best friend who knows you and is a writer, you know? So if you aren't a writer, then make friends with a writer <laughs> uh, or a director that will put you in things. Right. And, um, and make stuff too. make short films, make web series, make, make videos just like you got to practice you got to kind of do like 10 bad videos 10 make 10 bad things before you make one good thing you know so uh start making those bad things now <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. well uh, all right so um last question but it's the best quite land on high note yeah uh, what's your favorite set experience uh, favorite set experience yeah. like of all time yeah, uh, it could be uh it doesn't have to be the best because you know everyone's like oh yeah. there's so many but you know yeah. one pops in your head like yeah um there's okay there's there's a couple <laughs> okay i'll 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 do one there's one one in helix mm -hmm. uh well, there's one in helix when it was the first time we were outside and they had all like the the snow machines and the bubble machines and these giant fans and yeah. so it looked like it was in the middle of summer, but it looked like a blizzard yeah in the parking lot. That's crazy. And, and then I had to like walk through the blizzard with my like AK 47, you know, and do all this, like super, like the stuff we used to do when we were kids, yeah. you know, like, like walking through the bush and pretending to have these guns. So it was at that moment. I was like, oh, I made it. Like I made it to this moment. Like I'm doing what I was doing when I was a kid, you know? Um, so that was a really cool moment on Helix, uh, working, working in the parking lot in the middle of summer but in a blizzard. Yeah. Um, it was so cool. Um, and then uh, Mohawk Girls, um, one of the most famous and nerve wracking scenes that I ever had to do was the butter scene. 
uh, where I had to rub butter on an actor and then lick it off of that actor. Um, it was it was embarrassing, but you know we're, we're actors and we got to do it, and, and yeah. it turned out really funny. So like that was one of the one of the more funny moments in my or comedy career. Yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things last year was just when on Burden of Truth when we're all like there was me it was me Jess Kristen. Uh, uh, Peter and uh, and Star and we were all just like hanging out in the and and I think Nicola was there too and we're all just hanging out and somebody asked me if I knew how to do uh, oh what what's what's that what's the dance move that's like oh, the floss. Was, yeah so somebody asked me to do the floss and I totally couldn't do it so I got up and started like just trying to do it in a terrible way yeah. and then everybody got up and somebody was filming it I guess and yeah. we all got up and we all started doing the floss, the floss and it was like we all take like we're doing flosses and then the camera was panning around looking at all of us and we we're just making everybody laugh and doing some stuff. so yeah you know like it's it's a it's um it's a family burden of truth has been a real family for me and uh uh man i was just so excited to to be shooting season four in like a week a so week. It's yeah be, it's crazy it's gonna it's gonna be yeah. fun i'm excited yeah. i'm excited to jump on it yeah yeah I'm, I'm so excited to be back in winnipeg again yeah, hmm. I, I love it here. And uh, I was just told recently that uh, Manitou Abi means where the creator sits. I, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, 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 that's you probably most like I, I haven't, um, I don't know the exact one, but I, okay. I, um, I heard it was like based on the, the petroforms or something. Yeah, like that, yeah, that are out there. The secret site here in the petroforms. And it's, I want to go see the petroforms. So it seems like there's a lot to discover in Manitoba too. Yeah. Like, still that I, I want to go see after COVID, of course, like, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so thanks for having me today. Um, Thank and, you so uh, for any young actors out there, you know, wanting to get into the business, um, I say go for it, you know, like, uh, you gotta follow, like, it's, it's almost like just, it's like an inner voice that just kind of drives you. Like, you don't know maybe why you're going to do it or why you're drawn to storytelling or acting or, or telling stories, but, Mm -hmm. follow that voice like it'll lead you that intuition in those that will lead you all the way through your career to a long career and uh and we need you so if you want to get into the arts now's a good time <laughs> yeah and we'll see you out there give me a call give me a ring find me on social media happy to answer any questions awesome thank you so much oh thank you miigwech <laughs>